Today we're going to go over system of linear equation in two variable. So we know when we're solving uh, linear equations, we end up getting a line like this, right? One line for each equation. So when you say two variable uh, and um, system, system means you have more than one linear that you're trying to solve for. So for example, if we have a two linear, you will have a two line. And in that case, we have three different types of solutions. One is going to be uh, one unique solutions. So whenever you have one solutions, because those two linear line meet in one locations, like the first graph, then this will have just one solutions, right? Or if those two lines is parallel, when do we have a parallel line? When we have a same slope, right? So let's say those two equations have same slope, it means you're going to have a same line. I mean, parallel line, not the same line, parallel line. Then we call this is going to be no solutions, no solutions, right? And parallel line. And also system is inconsistent. The third type is when you have a many solutions. Many solution is because those two line is identical, same line, right? So same line, it means all the points will become your solution. That's why it's going to be many solutions. And we call equations are dependent. So we can have three different types of solution when you're solving system of linear equations with two variable. So system with two variable means that you're looking at two equations because in order to solve two equations, you have to have two uh, variable. We're going to look at example one, solving the system of, um, system of linear equations um, by substitution method. So substitution method. Substitution method. We wanted to see how we want to solve system of linear equations. Um, in order to use the substitution method, you need to pick one of the uh, equations from the given. So if two equation is given, you need to pick one. The reason you need to pick one is you need to rewrite the um, one equation to solve for a variable. So instead of picking the second one, I will pick first one. Why? Because I have x by itself. My leading coefficient x is 1. So if I um, rewrite this first equation for x, I don't have to divide. If I wanted to solve for x on the second equations, I have to divide everything by 3, which will give me a fractions. So I'm trying to be away from the fraction if I can. So I will pick the first equations, rewrite this into one variable equals two. It could be x or it could be y. But since this one have x leading coefficient one, I was trying to uh, solve for x. Then I will have five minus three y. Once you solve for one um, variable, then you can replace this into the other equations. So first equation saying x is equals to 5 minus 3y, now this x, I can replace it into my other equations. That's why it's a substitution method, because you're substituting your x from your other equations. So then instead of x, you're going to write 5 minus 3y minus 2y equal negative 18. So now you have equation with one variable where you should be able to solve for that variable. Let's open the parenthesis. And then combine the like term. I mean, I need to subtract 15.
and combine the like term. You will get negative 11y equals 2. Um, that's going to be negative 33. And when you're dividing by negative 11 both sides, you will get y3. Once you have y equals to 3, once you have one solution, you can replace back into other equations. If you want to, you can replace it at any of these equations to begin with, right? You can replace it here, you can replace it here. No matter where you replace it, you should be able to get the same answer. The reason I'm replacing it here is because it's already solved for x, so you should be able to easily find your x variable than the other two. So when you replace y equals to 3, you get x equals 5 minus 3 times 3. So you get 5 minus 9, which is going to be 4. So your x is 4. It means when you draw these two lines, there will be negative 4 and 3 is the points where this two line is going to intersect. Let's look at the next one. And again, we're going to try to use the substitution method. So in order to use the substitution method, I need to solve for one of the equations for a variable and look like um, the first equations I have a constant um, that I need to divide by when I'm solving for x or y but second equations I have y that have constant 1 or a coefficient one, right? So that I don't have to divide by any number when I'm solving for this y. So I'm going to pick that equations and solve for y. Then I have five minus four x. And then I'm going to replace that into the other equations. So I start with negative 5x minus 4y. Instead of y, you're going to replace 5 minus 4x. And then now I have equation with one variable. So let's solve for x. Distribute negative 4, you get negative 20 plus 16x equal 2. Combine the like term, you get 11x and you're adding 20 so it'll be 22 and when you're dividing by 11 you get 2 so you get x equals to 2 now we can replace that in two other equations so we can solve for y this time then we get y equal 5 minus 4 times 2 that is 5 minus 8, which is negative 3 for y. So the points, this 2 line is going to be intersect, is going to be 2 and negative 3. Always you write x first and y second when you're giving a point. Let's look at the next one. Um, look like I will solve for the first e uh, uh, equations and for y, right? And I get 4 minus 2x. And I can replace that into uh, other equation y. And we call this a substitution method, right? We are substituting your y with 4 minus 2x from other equations. Then you get 6x plus 3 times 4 minus 2x equal to 6. And 6x plus, when you're distributing, you get 12. 
minus six x equals to six. And when you combine the like term, it cancels out x variable. So you have no more x. And once you have no more variable, then your solution can be either no solution or many solutions. And when this um, equal sign is not holding a true statement, then you will say uh, that will be no solutions. So 12 is not equal to 6. So this is the false statement, right? This is false. It means that you're going to have no solutions. So when do we have no solutions? When the line is parallel to each other's. So you can tell this two equation is parallel to each other. That's why you have no solutions. Okay. Let's look at another one. Um, it's already one equation, so four variable y. So now what we need to do is replace this y into the other equations. So you'll have 8x minus 4 times 2x minus 1 equal to 4. And when you distribute negative 4, you get negative 8x plus 4 equal 4. Here again, variable x disappear because they cancel each other. And now you have 4 equals to 4. And you can tell this is true, right? When no variable, so no more variable, and equal um, equation is holding a, a true statement. So 4 is equals to 4, right? If that's true, it means you're going to have many solutions. Many solutions. So don't forget, whenever x is dis disappear and e equation is holding a true statement, many solutions, and when equation is holding a false statement because 12 is not equal to 6 and no, no more variable, then it will be no solutions. Now we're going to try to solve the system by using additional method. Additional method. Um, you might say, um, do we just need to remember one method? Well, depends. If you're going to go to higher math class where you have to find a system of linear equation with three variable, four variable, it means you're going to end up getting three equations and four equations. In that case, you have to use additional method to reduce your equations. And after you'd reduce to two variable with two equations, then you can use substitution method or additional method of your choice. But if you have uh, more than two equations with two variable, then you have to use additional to reduce your equations. But if you have a two variable uh, with two equations, then yes, you can pick and choose whichever method you wanted. But I'm going to show you how to use additional method in example two. So additional method means you're going to add these two equations. You're going to add these two equations to get rid of one of the variable. Before, when we're using the substitution method, you let one of the variable uh, equals two in one equation and use the substitutions. You substitute to make an uh, equation with only one variable. Additional method is you're going to add two equations to get rid of one of the variable. It means one of the one of the variable value coefficients have to be opposite. For example, right now your y is opposite um, opposite sign. You have a plus plus y, and you have minus y. But 
value itself is different. So if I have positive 8 here, and, and I have negative 8 there, and when we're adding these two equations, they will cancel out each other, right? So that's how I'm going to try to get rid of one variable from the equations. So in order to do that, the first thing I need to do is I need to uh, multiply first equation by 4. Y, so I can make it positive 8y. Let's see what I get if I multiply by 4. I will get 12x plus 8y equals 2. Uh, 4 times 48 is going to be 192. And then just copy down what I have on the second equation because I already have opposite of my y values. So I have 12, oh, not 12, 9x minus 8y equals 2, negative 24. So because y is uh, opposite, I should be able to add those two equations. Then I get 12x plus 9x is 21x. And then y cancel out. And that's the whole reason I multiply first equation by 4, so I can get rid of one of the variable. And then 192 minus 24, I get 168. And then when you're dividing both sides by 21 to isolate, x, I get 8 for x. So this is, um, this is using additional method. Once you have a solution for x, you can use uh, substitutions to find your y value. But because we're learning additional method, I'm going to try to use additional method again to solve for variable y. So if I wanted to solve for variable y, this time I need to get rid of x variable. It means I need to make the coefficient opposite for x. So it looked like three and nine, so the smallest number that I can make it opposite will be negative nine and positive nine. I already have positive nine. So all I need to do is multiply the first equation by negative three. So when I multiply the first equation by negative 3, I will get, so this equation, I'm going to multiply by negative 3 to make it uh, negative 9. Then I will get negative 9x minus 6y equal negative 144. And I just bring down my the second equation, which is 9x minus 8y equal negative 24. And I'm going to add these two equations. Then x will cancel out positive 9x, negative 9. And your y value, negative 6, negative 8, you get negative 14y. And negative 24, negative 144, you get negative 168. And then when you divide both sides by negative 14, your y is equals to 12. So the points, those, this two uh, line is going to intersect is 8 and 12. Let's try one more. So now we're looking at 3x minus 7y equal 1 and 6x plus 5y equals to negative 17. 
um, I think it's easier to make x opposite. This is 6, this is 3, so if I multiply the first equation by negative 2, I can make it negative 6, which is opposite. So when I'm adding it, it will get rid of x, and I should be able to solve for y. So let's do first equation multiplied by negative 2. Then I will get negative 6x plus 14y equal negative 2. And then I will just copy down as it is on the second equations. And when I'm adding those two equations, there will be no more x. And then that will be 19y, and that will be negative 19. So when you're dividing both sides by 19, I get negative 1 for y. Okay, so then let's see. What about if I wanted to solve for x? It means I need to get rid of y this time, right? So y, I have negative 7, positive 5. One is negative, one is positive, so sine is opposite. But in order to get opposite, uh, least common multiple of 7 and 5 will be 35. It means I need to multiply first equation by 5, second equation by 7. So this time I need to multiply number on both equations. So this equation I'm going to multiply by... Uh, 7, right? So then I will get 42x plus 35y equals to negative. 17 times 7 is 119. And for the second equation, I mean first equation, I'm going to multiply by 5. And then I will get 15x plus 35, wait, uh, minus 35, right? and 5, right? And when we're adding this 2, uh, there will be no more y. x is 42 plus 15, so 57x. And 5 and negative 19 is negative 114. And when you're dividing both sides by 57, you get negative 2. So it means negative 2 and negative 1 will be the solution for this two system of linear equations. Example 3 is word problem, and we're going to see how we're going to use the system of linear equations on the application problems. So example 3, it says the hospital used a 15% bleach solutions to disinfect uh, um, the area. How much 6% bleach solution must be mixed with the 18% bleach solutions to make? 50 liter of 15% uh, bleach solutions. So let's see. I wanted to know what we're trying to solve for, and it's say how much 6% bleach solution must be mixed with on 18% bleach solutions. So, how much of 16 and 18% bleach solution is what we're trying to solve? So I'm going to say uh, variable x is for amount of 
which solutions and y will be amount of 18 percent which solutions And then let's see um, what information we have. Um, so right now, uh, we have 6%, 18%, and we're trying to create 15% of the solutions, right? And the amount, is unknown for uh, 6% and 18%. 15%, um, we wanted to try to make 50 liter of it. So another way to put it, why, if we wanted to, this is going to be equal to 50 minus X amounts, right? Or if you add 6% uh, and 18% amounts, so adding X and Y, you should be able to get 50. So if you are adding X plus Y, you should get 50. That's how we know Y will be equals to 50 minus X, right? And what other information we have, um, if we wanted to get pure amount, then we know that we need to multiply this to 0 0.06 times x, and this is going to be 0.18 times y, which is going to be 50 minus x will give me the pure amount from 15%, so it will be 0.15 times 50. And you can write this into the equation saying that if you're adding the pure amount from 6% with pure amount from 18%, you should be able to get pure amount from 15% to create our equations. And now we should be able to solve this. And before uh, we do that, I wanted to get rid of the decimal so it will be easier for algebra purpose. We're going to multiply both sides of equation by 100 because you have two decimals, right? Two decimal multiply by 100. You're going to get uh, 6x plus 18 times 50 minus x. And then that will be 15 times 50. And when you open the parentheses by distributing 18, you get 900 minus 18x equal 15 times 50, you get 750. Combine the like terms, you get 6 and negative 18, you get negative 12x. When you're subtracting 900, you get negative 150. Divide both sides by negative 12, you get so you're doing 150 over 12, you get 12.5. And when we replace that into find the variable y, minus 12.5, we get 37.5. It means your x is for 6% bleach solutions. So you're going to have, what's the x amount? 12.5, right? So it'll be 12.5 liter of the 6% bleach 
Rutledge Solutions. Wed. 37.5 liter of the 18% which solution is what you're going to use to make 50 liters of 15% solutions. The next example is the river boat traveling upstream against the currents on the Mississippi River takes three hours to travel 24 miles. The return trip downstream with the current takes only two hours. Find the speed of the boat in the still water and the speed of the current. So we're looking for two unknown. It say find the speed of the boat in still water and the other one is the speed of the current. So then I'm going to say X is going to be speed of the boat in still water. And C will be speed of the current. And see if we can um, write the chart again with whatever the information we have. And one other thing that we know whenever they're talking about distance and rate, we know we can use um, distance equal to rate times time as the formulas, right? So let's see what information we have. We have given with upstream and we have going downstream. And then we have distance and raid and time. The distance uh, going upstream is given 24 miles and going downstream will be the same. The rate is going to be going up the stream is going to be going against the current. So speed of the boat in the still water minus uh, current. Going downstream, you're going to get help. So current is going to uh, push you down faster. So you get help. Uh, you're going to get added of the currents from the speed. So you get X plus C and it takes three hours to go up the streams and it takes two hours to go downstream so this is the information given so far so then we could say uh, we have using the formula 24 equals 2 x minus c times 3 for the uh, um, for the going upstream so just replacing all this value into the formulas right d equals to rt and then we do the same thing for going down the stream it will be 24 and equals 2 x plus c times 2 which is the times right and we can simplify this, uh, which will give me 24 and distribute 3 will be 3x minus 3c. And, and going downstream, um, we have 24 equal 2x plus 2c. 
and let's say if we wanted to use the additional method right additional method then look like I'm going to multiply the first one by 3 let's divide by 3 because we wanted to make let's see if we wanted to solve for uh, x first so then when we divide by 3 we will get um, 8 equals x minus c and this one on the bottom one you're going to divide by 2 then you get 12 equal x plus c and when we're adding those two equations uh, your c will disappear now you should be able to solve for x right you get 2x on the right side the left side will be 8 plus 12 so it will be 20 when you're dividing both sides by 2, you get x equal 10. Once you get x equal 10, then you can replace back to one of any of these equations and solve for your c. So if I replace this into that, I have 8 equals 2, x is 10 minus c. So then your C is going to be 10 minus 8, which is going to be 2. So that means you're going to have your X is speed up the boat in still water. That's going to be um, 10 mile per hour. And for speed up the current is going to be two mile per hour.